So our application is working pretty well for desktop machines, but this is the perfect type of app you might want on a tablet. I know when I was doing this project, my daughter immediately wanted to play this on the iPad. Right now, if you take a look at this project on the iPad, you'll notice that you can't really drag elements. It doesn't understand click events on the iPad. And the other thing is, if you rotate this into vertical view, you'll see that the elements don't quite fit the screen. And when you rotate them back, you'll see that they're also sort of too big. So we're gonna have to adjust a few things to make this work. So the first thing we need to do is fix an issue with the viewport so that whenever we rotate the device, it'll display it properly. The viewport is how iPads and iPhones understand a browser's width. And normally in most web applications, you want to set the viewport to whatever size your device would be. So we're going to do something unusual here. And what we want to do is go over to the head section of our HTML page and somewhere in there, add in a meta tag. And the meta tag is going to have a name, a viewport, and then we're going to set the content to a specific width. Now, as I mentioned, in most web applications, we will want the width to be equal to the device width. In this case, we're setting all of our measurements by absolute positioning, as you see right on any of these images. So we want to set the width of our elements to width that encompasses the entire screen that we're trying to position these elements in. The one that works for this project happens to be 1200. So that's what I'll set it. And the other thing that I need is another meta tag. This one is gonna have a name of Apple Mobile Web App Capable. And the content is gonna be set to yes. Now what this will do is when we pull this up in a browser, it's going to allow us to export this as a desktop item. So I'm gonna save this and switch back over so if we pull this back up into our iPad with this new code that I've inserted in there, it'll look just fine when it comes up in my browser. And now if I rotate the device, notice that it adjusts to the size of the device. So that's what the viewport tag is doing for us. The other tag allows us to save this as an application on our desktop. So if I click on this icon right here and I tap on add to home screen, it's gonna allow us to save this as an application on our home screen. So I'm gonna click on this add button. So it's gonna show up somewhere on our desktop like this. And if I tap on this application, it's gonna come up in a browser that doesn't have any of the navigation that the browser window would normally have. So that's the advantage of using those two tags. So let's go back into our code and add the ability to touch the elements on the screen to our code. So we're gonna go back into the script. Let's go ahead and close out the index and I'm gonna hide these other elements here. And what we wanna do is track another event. So it's gonna go down here with all the other events that I'm using. And this event is gonna be called touch start. And of course, I'm gonna execute a function called touch start that I'll have to create up here. So I'll add another function and this is gonna be called touch start. It's gonna receive an event. And the first thing I wanna do here is prevent the default behavior on a mobile device. The default behavior when you tap and move will be to scroll the page. And you're probably seeing that whenever I was showing you the page at the very beginning of this video. So we wanna prevent that. So we'll use prevent default. And the next thing we want to do is create some variables for our artwork. So which art, just like we had before, except that now when I'm touching, I'm not going to have any of the variables that I'm setting up in any of these other events because these touch events are going to be different than any of these move events. So I'm going to need to keep track of my element in its own variable. So I'll set which art to the target of the event. So in this case, the target would be the thing that I touched on. And then I'm gonna create another variable. This variable is gonna be called touch and it's gonna be set to the event and then touches and then a ray value of zero. So the way that touches work on an iPad, whenever you touch the screen, it's gonna create a finger touch that's gonna to be tracked in a different array number. So the first finger you put on the iPad is gonna be tracked at this event touches and then the array value of zero. If you tapped somewhere else on the screen, it would be tracked on a separate array number. So this is gonna give us the touch event at position zero, which will be our first touch. Okay, so then just like in other places, I need to track the position of my move. So I'm gonna create another variable called 
move offset x and that is going to be equal to which art the variable i just created and then offset left minus the touch position and page x and you might be noticing that we're using things that are maybe not compatible with some other platforms like old versions of Firefox, but we don't really care in this case because I'm targeting right now the iPad and it will understand every one of these X and Y positions and dimensions. So in addition to move offset X, I need to track move offset Y. And you gotta be careful here that you update this to top and also this to page Y. Now, just like before, we need to reset the Z position. So it's going to execute this function right here so that every element that I tap is going to be at the very top of every one of the other images. And then after that, I'm going to set the Z index of the element that I tapped on. To be 10. All right, so the next thing I need to do is add an event listener for my moving or my touch moving. And down here, I was adding an event in three different calls, right? But when I'm doing touches, I can track the event inside this touch start. So I'll do which art and then add an event listener. And I want to track this time touch move. And then execute a function literal inside here. So I'm going to open this up and then do the rest of my code here. So now the position of my element is going to be equal to touch that page X. That's the position of the touch in relationship to the page and plus the move offset X and the same thing for the Y position. So as the element moves, I'm going to track the position dynamically. So this touch move is going to execute while I'm moving the finger on top of the iPad. And this touch right here should just be touch, not touche. Page Y, move offset Y. And then I need to set the positioning attributes of the element that I'm moving, which art dot style dot left equals position X in this case, plus the word pixels or PX. And then clean this up a little bit. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the Y parameter here. So which art style top when we do Y position is going to be Y and pixels as well. One more thing, I need to make sure that this passes the false parameter here so that it bubbles properly. And I'm going to save this. I've uploaded this application into an FTP server so that I can look at it with my iPad. And if I click on one of these elements and just drag them over, I can start making the snowman just fine. So our touch events are working properly. And now we can get busy building our snowman or snow ladies. So our approach to touches is definitely different than what we did when dragging. We were able to create a touch start event. And instead of creating separate listener for the other events, we just added an event listener for touch start and then inside touch start, we added an event listener to touch move. Notice that we didn't really need to track a touch drop or a drop event because as soon as we're done moving something, the element is already positioned in the right place. So with the exception of having to keep track of the touches, using touch events is no different than any other event. Now that your application is done, it's time to go ahead and build your own drag and drop games. If you're a dad like me, you're going to be a super popular dad whenever you finish one of these.